Okay, here we are reading to you from the Used Companion magazine, and this is May 5th of 1892. That's 123 years ago. And today we're going to read to you uh, Undisciplined. Undiscipl How do you say that? Unprincipled. Unprincipled. There you go. <laughs> okay, yay. Unprincipled. Okay, and it'll be read to you by my daughter, Jennifer. A few years ago, a well-known financer died in New York. His family were overwhelmed with grief. He had been a faithful and tender husband and father. The servants of his household stood sobbing around the door of his chamber when he was dead. He had been always, this, they said, kind and just to them. When his estate was settled, there was not the claim of a penny against it from any tradesman. Butcher, baker, all persons whom he employed had been paid cash day by day. One of his maxims has been, it is dishonest to owe a poor man for his labor. That is his capital. Pay him cash or allow him interest. Yet this man, who in his individual dealings was scrupulously honest and kind, had gained his fortune by shrewd, remorseless management of a great corporation that controlled a monopoly and fattened on the necessities of the people. The public was preyed upon by the monster as by some ravenous beast, and a whole community suffered that it might grow rich and powerful. <clears throat> this man used to try to answer the reproaches of his conscience by saying with a laugh, I am not personally responsible. I keep my own hands clean. You must not look for a soul or conscience in a corporation. His peculiar moral, moral blindness is a common disease, and his method of reasoning is a popular one. Corporations, firms, town councils, even school committees will be guilty of unjust, cruel, and sometimes dishonest acts from which the individual members would turn with indignation in a private transaction. A merchant who would scorn to cheat a customer by, by adulterating his goods will join a corporation in watering stock and thus, by enriching himself, will rob every ignorant purchase, purchaser who may afterward become a shareholder. The corporation, it is true, has no soul of its own, but the soul of each member is responsible for its acts if he aids and approves them. He forgets, too, that there will come a day of reckoning when God will deal not with rings or clubs or firms, but with each man who has belonged to them. There you go. Now that's quite a story. Do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. And this gives you a good insight on how they worried about those things 123 years ago. But it's just common practice of today. So stay tuned for more and I'll bring you some more readings. Bye-bye now.